Let's go. Vamos. Vargas says he has defeated all of the Southpaws he has fought. Tim Austin told us that he has studied the tapes of Pernell Whitaker to see how he fought Southpaws. Vargas grew up fighting with his older brother Goyo, who, as Larry mentioned, held the featherweight title before losing it to Kevin Kelly in 93, appeared on HBO both against Kelly and then later at 130 pounds against Floyd Mayweather Jr. Goyo was larger than Adan, and as the result, Adan matured as a counterpuncher, something he's been doing since he was a little kid. When you get guys that come from these fighting families, it's very interesting to see how they fight because they learn a lot of different habits on their own a lot of time trying to be different from their brothers. When Southpaws go against each other, Emmanuel, are they surprised to see the angles and opportunities that are available to them since they're normally accustomed to fighting conventional fighters? Yes, and they're usually very uncomfortable, too, because they're used to fighting right-handers, and they see things coming from the opposite angle that really uh, confuses them and makes them feel uncomfortable. So it might take a round or two to adjust. Although both fighters are throwing a fair number of punches in the first round, and Tim Austin was just short with the sweeping left cross there. It's interesting, Vargas said that he trained longer than he's ever trained for any fight in his career. And, of course, part of the training, as Larry mentioned, at 13,000 feet altitude. So if anybody's in shape for the fight, Vargas is the one who should be. Tim Austin, boxer puncher. Trained by Aaron Snowell, who uh, at one stage of Mike Tyson's career was Tyson's trainer. Snowell, a protege of Slim Robinson. Yeah, Aaron Snowell is a very good trainer. Think so? Very good trainer, yes. Vargas is trained by his father. Both of these guys not only fight very much alike, but they fight with the same rhythm and the same speed. And now Vargas corners Austin and lands a four-punch combination. Good first round for Adon Vargas, who has so far given as good as he's gotten against Tim Austin. Now Austin loops a left hand over the top and lands it. We're watching around without any clinches after last week. No, no clinches at all. When it seemed as though the fighters had heard Michael Buffer ask for, let's get ready to wrestle. Very good, entertaining first round between two fighters who, who are mirror images of each other. Same style, same tempo. And Ray Torres is our interpreter in at Don Vargas's corner where his father Gregorio will speak Spanish. Okay, he's doing well. He's very slow, so you're gonna do something. You, you gotta work, work, paint him, paint him. You know, yeah, close, his, close his face and make him. He said, you're gonna open that, that shot for your left hand. All right, down and up in three jabs. Pop, 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 and then the body shots, okay? Thank you. Move him. All right, so pick up your pace. Okay, vamos. Ahora le digo. Mucha suerte. No te descuides para nada, eh? Ella te conoció, ya sintió tantito. Round two begins at Don Vargas in the white trunks. Cincinnati kid, kid Tim Austin in the red. Vargas from Hidalgo, Mexico. Both fighters landed in the first round. Now, big right hand by Tim Austin momentarily stuns Vargas. Austin trying to follow up. I guess the first round was a feel-out round. Well, I think his corner probably told him there's a very good chance that he lost that first round, too. I know for speaking to uh, Snowell that they didn't expect Vargas to be this good. They expected a much easier fight. 
And what surprised me to some degree, Timmy seems to be a little bit slower than he's been in the past, especially for a small man. Well, hard to be at your absolute best if, if somewhere in the back of your mind you're thinking that the opponent has some deficiencies. And right now, Adon Vargas is clearly better than Tim Austin anticipated. Putting punches together. The Mexican fighters have become very technical boxers now. And often they're fighting a lot of our American fighters and actually outboxing the fighters uh, from America and actually out counter punching them. Vargas wobbled Austin backward with a jab there. Uh, there's been a kind of cross pollinization in which so many Mexicans have fought in America and seen American fighters uh, via television as well. And so we are seeing more boxer punchers rather than just brawlers uh, from Mexico. A lot of Mexican fighters are actually training here in America too a lot. Mark is punching effectively around and through Austin's guard. Snow asked Austin for more body punches. Austin hasn't delivered much to the body in this round because he landed early to Vargas's head. May have thought that he was going to get the Mexican fighter in trouble and wound up paying a price stop, stop, when Vargas stop. was able to counter. And actually, I think he may have shot his wide to a certain degree the first part of the round, and now he's really just now regaining his strength back again. Can one flurry like that really put a guy on his heels for a minute and a half or two minutes? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Sometimes it's just like sprinting, but most fighters usually can recuperate after that. It probably takes about a minute or 30 seconds. Vargas has lost three times, including twice in the last two years. Lost to Virapol Sayapram, the fight Larry described in Cambodia. Lost to Adi Moya, 11th round knockout in McAllen, Texas last year. Austin's people can't be faulted for having thought perhaps that Vargas was coming down a little bit. Action fight. Meanwhile, this Tuesday, HBO's Sports of the 20th Century documentary series brings you the debut of A City on Fire. The story of the 1968 Detroit Tigers. The late 60s saw violent racial unrest in Detroit and in other American cities. But the success of the Tigers is seen as having helped to ease tensions while uniting the people of Detroit in a common bond. Come back after the devastation of 67 and win a pennant and a World Series, then there's possibility all over the place. City on Fire premieres this Tuesday only on HBO. Up jab, foul, foul, there you go. All right, seconds out, let's go. Coming over. Seconds out. Copy box numbers through the first two rounds. Austin landing 42 of 133. Vargas 29 of 124. In terms of sheer artistic impression, the fight has looked just about even. Both guys have had their moments. Yeah, but that was a very low rib cage, Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, the, the trunks are very high on both fighters. Right hand lands for Austin. And a big left hand straight up the middle for Austin. Momentarily popped Vargas's head back. You see it. You see a fighter in Austin who's adapting very well to a well school opponent. He's doing some brawling here. He's changing his tactics. Changing his tempo. Change tempo. Uh, 
throwing hard punches, soft punches, uh, trying to go to the body. Yes, it, yes, that's what makes a top pro. Yeah, he's gotten out of the boxing mode because when they were both boxing, it was like 50 50. So he's changed his tactics now and become through more power punches. Just taking a good left and a good right. Yeah, Vargas is quick with the jab and he just misses on a left cross coming down that could have hurt Austin. Just when Austin seems to get it going, Vargas comes back with a little rally of his own. in this fight. I think it's going to be a fight where whoever probably gets the biggest punching power may be a factor, and it looks like it's going to be Timmy Austin at the stage. Yeah, it does look as though round by round, the difference in punching power is beginning to increase. That's just what changes the course of the fight. See, folks, it is possible to have a good fight at close quarters <laughs> without wrestling and clinching. You got to be faster. You gotta be quicker. Come on, keep working and work hard. If you work with speed and, and chase and, and pressure him, he, he won't know what to do. That's a no-no. All right, he's, he's a tall guy. You'll pull back. You gotta put your head where you're gonna punch. All right, that's better. And body shots are gonna loosen him up. Now you keep Close zipping him down there. Everything's gonna be all right. Right here, you see Timmy Austin setting up for a good power punch in left hand, and he's going to go right back to that same power again later on. You notice he's not really concentrating so much on his right jab as much as power punches at this stage now. Austin in the third round by county box numbers landed 14 out of 20 power shots. Vargas threw more, but landed fewer, 10 of 36. Let's bring in Harold to see how he scored it through three. Okay, Jim, two to one, 29 to 28, Timmy Austin. You know, the first round, I thought of Don Vargas did real well. I love that four punch combination landed. But since then, it's that I'm impressed with the hard right jab of Timmy Austin, where he doubles and triples up on it, and certainly the powerful left hand, which is the difference in a fight. Timmy Austin, two to one. I have the same score. champion has to be ready for opponents that don't figure to fight as well as Vargas is fighting now to be better than they've seen them before. You're absolutely right about that. Learn also at this stage here, Vargas is a very consistent fighter. He's fighting very consistent. He's, even though he's been hit with some good punches because Timmy is, has a little better defense than Vargas, and he's a better puncher. But nevertheless, Vargas is consistent, though. You can't rest and stop at any time because he's right there. Vargas beating Tim Austin to the punch there on three separate occasions. His consistency is becoming a factor now. First in a lot of exchanges. On the other hand, his punch is not as sharp or as spirited as was the case in the first round. But Vargas still throwing a lot and landing a lot. As Austin focuses more and more on power shots. Austin starting to mix it up a lot. Shot to the body, upstairs to the head, shot to the head, downstairs to the body. There's the overhand left for Austin that lands. And as they trade shots again, the power deficit showing up once again. Power deficit also in a better defense. But after every one of those exchanges, here comes Vargas right back. This is world-class stuff, folks.
fighting round four as though it's round 12 of a close fight. Looks like an abrasion showing up under Vargas's right eye. Nothing dangerous. Now it looked in the first couple of rounds as though his eyes were going to swell, but it has not happened so far. There's Austin's heavier right hand moving Vargas back. If I was an Austin I would still be nervous. Plenty to be nervous about. Terrific fight. It's a, it's a little gas. You're okay. No problem. I'll All right. He, he got it. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Tim, just keep your, keep your hands up. You're all right. All right? Hey, Tim, just pull your hand up. Relax. He's trying to hit you with body shots to hold, hold up. Remember I told you when he comes to your body, you got to go right back down there. Yeah, boy, Stop no, pulling up. Here, boy. Right. Punch my ass. All right, come on. Okay, don't get overconfident and lateral movement and, j and attack him with the jab. You're doing well. Everything is fine. you got to keep doing it. Tus golpes. Austin is going down low often and coming back and catching with a lot of punches. And then as soon as he lands the shots, here comes Vargas straight back. Vargas is not as diversified with his upper body movement as Tim Austin. He's more stationary. Austin jumping around as he gets up off the stool and gets ready to fight again, seeming to try to psych himself up into a higher energy level as he goes against an Adon Vargas who's fighting very vigorously and with great commitment. The cut, which is materializing under Vargas's eye, was caused, according to the Nevada State Athletic Commission, by a punch, not by a butt. Austin devotedly going to the body now, much more so than in the first couple of rounds. And the body shots are setting up what comes upstairs. Now Vargas tries to get to Austin's body, taking a page from Austin's book. It's almost as though Vargas wants to answer Austin specifically with everything he does. You know, and every, everything that Austin lands, he has to right away be alert because he can never relax. And going down a stretch, if he doesn't knock out Vargas or hurt him seriously, this could be a tough fight for him if he's not in good shape because he's going to have to fight every round. This is the 42nd professional fight of Adon Vargas's career. Yesterday, his manager told us that it's the first time in the 42 fights that he's ever shown up and had a hotel room, a videotape to look at his opponent, a signed contract, <laughs> meal money, the whole ride. He feels like he's on top of the world. And he's showing his appreciation tonight, too. is trying to put Adon Vargas away with a flurry of power punches. Every once in a while, Austin lashes out with a two or three punch combination. And increasingly, these are with devoted bad intentions. Good job of blocking the first couple of punches with his elbows by Austin, but then Vargas landed one upstairs. Won't take no for an answer. Drives Austin back. Before this fight, we talked about whether Vargas could bring out the best in Austin, and he is. Cut above the right eye of Tim Austin. Yep. It was it just started the previous round. Doesn't appear to be serious yet. That's the cut that was caused by a bunch. shots right across the shoulders now in Austin. First of two fights on HBO's Boxing After Dark. This one living up to the action-filled tradition of the telecast. Later on, heavyweight fight, John Ruiz against Kirk Johnson. Both fighters say, I'm ready for Lennox Lewis. I'm going to prove it tonight. Both fighters demanding to get a shot at Lewis for the title if they win tonight. Are you being Go up this nose a little bit, Jeff. Go ahead. Come on. 
fine. Watch your hand there when I can't see. Go on, okay? Off the jab. Yeah, off the jab, double jab. Oh, uh, right hook, straight land, hand or left hand. Right hook, but you got to pick your pace up on forward and zip them body shots and stop pulling your head out. Oh, the count uh, I'll go with you. When you come out, don't come out standing still if he's going to hit you. Feint him. And attack him, but be careful. Be careful. Eric Snow made a good point to Tim Austin, who has been guilty here a few times, Emmanuel Stewart, of pulling his head straight back out of the exchanges. Yeah, and oftentimes he's trying to go to the body, and while he's doing that, Vargas is shooting that left cross across the shoulders, and he's been landing with pretty good regularity now. Now he landed, there it is again, almost just grazed him, but he's been in a lot of good left-hand punches now on Timmy Austin. That's compared to the earlier rounds. Has there been a clinch in this fight? Not a one that I can remember. Tony Weeks getting to see a really good fight. Close up. Combi box totals through round five. Austin 123 out of 335. Vargas 97 out of 394. They're throwing, they're landing. Timmy is superior, I think, in boxing talent as well as punching power, but it's a, I see a strong determination in the face of Vargas. So he's very, very determined for this fight, even though he doesn't really have the skills. He seems to be, his mindset is the type where it's going to be very difficult to seriously hurt him. A cut opened up again on Tim Austin's right eye. And Tony Weeks stepped in, you saw, momentarily to warn Vargas about low blows. He did so just after Tim Austin had pasted Vargas with a big left cross. Now Vargas catches a low one below the belt and also catches a left cross up top, following it behind. There's another one. Austin's making some hay now by going to the body and then coming straight back upstairs with the left hand. Good round for Timmy Austin. Big right hand by Austin. Vargas taking some heavy shots in this round. But Timmy has got to always keep watching out for Vargas' left cross. landed a really good quick left hand right on the chin. Austin took it very well. Big left hand by Austin. He misses with the second one. Vargas wants to answer back right away. Good what a fight. fight. What a fight. Sit down. You know, everything's fine. The more you pressure, the, the weaker he gets. You got you, you to paint him. You got to paint him and throw that uppercut. Be, be smart. Be smart. He's, he's weakening. That's why he's not running around anymore. You open that shot up top, you ain't pulling your head back so much, all right? We need that right hook left hand or you can leave with your left hand but keep your right hand up all right mm -hmm. leave with your straight left back right with your right hand sometime or switch around right hook straight left hand but do four one two three four and then up the middle let's go Take him out. this fight has six more rounds to go man that cut looks like it could become a problem and, and also the fact that Vargas is landing with more frequency at that same eye there he is again it's 
you have it scored through six. Okay, Jim, 4-2, 58-56, Timmy Austin. Jimmy, and I gotta tell you, you score on clean punching and effective aggressiveness. Don Vargas pressing forward, one rounds one and, f and six because he's the effective aggressor. But with the clean punching, I always said is the most important of the four factors that we score on, and certainly Timmy Austin has been the cleaner, harder puncher. 4-2, Austin. Same score here. numbers in the last round the two fighters combined to throw 190 punches left hand lands flush for Austin and Vargas momentarily rocked against the ropes two more power punches land for Austin now Austin begins to paw at the cut above his eye well we asked earlier whether Vargas was going to push Austin and set him up for some fights against bigger guys and he sure is doing that now and you know, if he did move up and fight with Barrera, uh, Morales, it wouldn't be that bad because both of those guys are primarily boxers. They don't really uh, use their physical strength that much. Barrera has primarily become a counterpuncher lately, and for the most part, Morales has become a boxer. So as a, as the weight wouldn't be that much of a big handicap. Oh, I think it would be a factor. Austin uh, thinks it'd be a factor. Austin is the one who repeatedly says, remember, a bantam weight. This is my weight class. Well, he's having problems with a bantam weight tonight, too. Yeah, he is. He's consistent. And when you look at his matchstick legs, you know he's a bantam weight. commanding the space in the center of the ring. Yes, this is a good fight. Boxing, punching, body punching, no clinches, no illegal fouls. If you watched all 12 rounds of Vernon Forrest and Shane Mosley last week, this is our reward to you <laughs> for having <laughs> suffered through it. You like boxing? August 17, Boxing After Dark returns with heavyweight action as David Tua matches up with former champion Michael Moorer. September 7, Roy Jones puts his light heavyweight championships on the line, this time taking on Englishman Clinton Woods. And September 14, HBO pay-per-view brings you the grudge match everyone's been waiting for when Oscar De La Hoya and Fernanda Vargas face off for the 154-pound championship. HBO, the heart and soul of boxing. Steve Reels, down and up, up and down shots. Okay. Don't look so much the power shooting because yeah. he's trying to hit you with speed. Speed shooting. Yeah. All right? Okay. Just keep touching. Stop, 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 stop. Speed shooting. All right? Good. All right, check it out. Come on. Speed shooting. Let's, let's get that mouthpiece in there. Uh, be lively there. Be smart. Don't get overconfident. Round seven was a big one for Tim Austin. You saw the CompuBox power punch numbers that saw Austin landing 30 out of 48 power punches in the round. So as we go to the eighth, Austin seems increasingly in command of the fight, but still not completely out of danger against a very committed and energetic Adan Vargas. landed a left cross flush but it it now appears that Austin is handling a Var Vargas's power without too much difficulty yeah. able to stand in against him and fire back his right eye. If 
fighting with blood seeping into the eye. No huge difficulty so far, but clearly somewhat distracted by it. Yeah, Vargas got some bad bruises under his eyes, too. Emmanuel, we used to often observe, and many have, that Prince Nassim Hamed's extraordinary punching power must have come from his tree trunk thighs, big soccer playing legs. So how do we account for Austin being a puncher when his legs are like toothpicks? Well, maybe it's the time of his hands punching power. There you go. <laughs> Balance and timing, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's got his head full of nice though, still. He, even though he's landing all of the big punches and he's changing up his style, doing a lot of good things, it's, he's always got to look for this guy to shoot that left hand right over his shoulders. This is unusual because most of the time, Timmy's been catching most of Vargas' right hands by blocking him with his left. It's one of the few times he's gotten caught. Good body shot by Austin. Digs Vargas out of there. Another good body shot by Austin. Sets up a near right hand shot upstairs. Vargas just pulled away. willing to trade with Vargas, and trade they do as they come down the stretch of the eighth. Come on, let's hold it. Let's, let's wipe him down. Put some water on here. Hey, he won that round. We lost that one. Okay, what round is this? You, you let him go. You, you got to pressure him. When you pressure him, he doesn't know what to do. Stay in that pocket. You slip over here, bang. Step over, step over. Get off that line. You get over here, you get it. Get over there and get it. Start stepping off him. Body shots going to hurt him. But step off the line. Okay. All right? You step over here, you can get that. That left hand's going to be sitting there. You measure off. That left hand down the middle. Check it out, coach. Let's go. These are the kind of fighters we meet when we call them big little men. Round eight of a scheduled 12. CompuBox numbers find Tim Austin landing 134 power shots, landing at a, <coughs> excuse me, at a 55% connect percentage for his power shots. Increasingly, he pulls away on Harold Letterman's scorecard, but Adon Vargas is still right there. Excuse me. Round nine, not round eight. Four straight jabs by Vargas. As you notice the referee doesn't warn them when a lot of the body punches are really hitting on the cups. That's because the cups are very high. And I have to give the referee credit for that. A lot of times the referee starts warning guys regardless. Sometimes when a guy's about to hit another guy low, he'll partially pull the punch anyway, <laughs> so that the punch doesn't really have that big an effect. And referees will usually let yeah. that one go. Oftentimes, the guy, the guy that's, that gets hit low is because he's using his hands to try to block, and he forces the other guy's punch to go lower, too. Austin thinks the end may be near as he sets up to square his shoulders and rip Vargas along the ropes. Vargas steps away, but took a couple of big left hands before he moved, and now typical of the fight. Marcus insists on coming back, landing his own series of combinations, saying to Austin, I'm still right here in front of you. We're only in round nine. We're going the distance, Timmy. In that vicious exchange on the ropes, Vargas slipped in a real right hand that made Austin step back for a moment. I doubt that Austin has ever been really pushed to his limit this way before.
too much and it comes down upper body movement. He just goes straight back, tries to hold his hands up, hope that he can time the punch. And Timmy often sometimes can pretty much figure out where he's going to hold his hand and he gets those big power punches. Through. Timmy Austin showed a lot of class though, hasn't he? He, Very weathered, impressive. The, Very he impressive. weathered the early Vargas storm. He made a couple of adjustments in there. He presses his advantage in power punching. He shows his determination. He fights through the blood over his eye. Good show <laughs> by Tim Austin. He's changing gears on him. You got a higher gear than that. Huh? Like a tip. Like a tip. Huh? Most you ain't safe to do it. Come on now. You keep staying in that pocket, keep that belly. He's going to give it up. You Coming up in down. the next bout, you we'll see Canadian heavyweight unbeaten like title that. prospect Kirk Johnson. Johnson. Larry, what's the Canadian move? heavyweight roll landscape? You can roll in. Well, it's got a, an interesting history. Tommy Burns, uh, the only native-born Canadian to win the heavyweight uh, championship in the early part of the 20th century, famous for losing it to Jack Johnson. Trevor Burbick came out of uh, the West Indies and lived in Canada. He had the title for a while. Lennox Lewis, of course, born in Britain. George Chavalo, who fought Muhammad Ali twice, Joe Frazier and George Foreman. And Victor McLaughlin, the famous character actor in the movies, once fought Jack Johnson. It's, it's one of Lewis's more unusual credentials, incidentally, that he's the best heavyweight in the history of Jamaica. He's the best heavyweight <laughs> in the history of Great Britain, and he's the best heavyweight in the history of Canada. And, and the best heavyweight of the 90s. And he lives about 75% of the time in the United States. Yeah, he's the best heavyweight <laughs> in South Beach, too. Hey, Harold, how do you have it through nine? Okay, Jim, 88-83, seven rounds to two, Timmy Austin. I gotta tell you something, Jim, there's absolutely no quit in the Don Vargas. Without question, Timmy Austin has big rounds, in rounds eight and nine. Just like you see there, landing tremendous punches. So, Austin, seven rounds to two. I have it six rounds to three. And again, Austin sizes up his chances of finishing Vargas as he lands a big left hand. And again, Vargas shows his grit by fighting his way back off the ropes. But sooner or later, the power is going to be too much. And the end could be near now as Tony, Austin Tony starts Wicks another onslaught. Tony Weeks is looking to stop the fight. Yeah, this is, this is too dangerous. And Weeks makes a good stoppage right there. Vargas just wouldn't go down as he continued to take a series of power shots. Very, and, very impressive performance. And he wouldn't, he wouldn't clinch Clitch. when he needed to clinch in that round. No clinches at all. There wasn't a clinch in the fight. No. Clinchless in Las Vegas. Hey, a terrific <laughs> performance by Austin, who was indeed challenged and pressed in the fight. Spirited performance by Vargas. Good fight. And Timmy Austin is real quality. That was a solid performance. Combination of everything and made great adjustments too as the fight went along. La, 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 la. Given the fact that he's a southpaw who can punch, if he can carry that punch up at all, fighters like Morales and Barrera might not be terribly anxious to see him coming. That's correct, and they're not very physical right now, too. Both of those guys are laid back boxers. But Austin keeps saying, well, what I want to do is unify the Bantamweight Championship, an accomplishment which is very dear to his heart, though it probably won't earn him as much money or as many fans as he would earn by moving up in weight. He has a tough fight, his next fight, with Marquez. Rafael Marquez. Yes, a very tough fight. A man who uh, has beaten Mark Too Sharp Johnson twice. I'm very Timmy impressed. Austin sees his opportunity and seizes that opportunity against a tough professional fighter. A fighter who did come to win despite Timmy Austin's stature in the boxing world in general and in the bantamweight division in particular. It was Vargas's resistance which essentially ran out of gas in the 10th. Austin after having peppered him with power punches in the 8th and 9th, pressed the advantage, landed 30 of 47 punches in the 10th. Vargas landed only one punch in that round before Tony Weeks alertly and properly decided he had seen enough. So Austin remains unbeaten. 25 wins, no losses, one draw. 22nd knockout victory for the Cincinnati Kid. Let's go to Jimmy Lennon for the official particulars. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. One minute, three seconds in round number 10. Our referee in charge, Tony Weeks, stops the contest. The winner by way of technical knockout. He is still undefeated and still the IBF bantamweight champion of the world, the Cincinnati Kid, Tim Austin. Final CompuBox numbers in Tim Austin's conquest of Adon Vargas. And all these numbers were relatively even after three, four rounds. Austin built his advantages as the fight motored to its close, landing 112 more punches than Vargas, throwing 42 fewer. Vargas just kept letting his hands go, even in the face of the power punch onslaught from Austin. And that's one of the reasons that Austin was able to land at such a high rate of accuracy. He used his jab to set this up in the first couple of rounds and then eventually went mostly with power punches as it became clear to him that Vargas would keep throwing and would leave the target open for him. So Tim Austin remains unbeaten and solidifies his reputation as one of the best boxer punchers in the sport and certainly the most dynamite fighter in the 115, 118 pound weight class. People have talked about him moving up and fighting Paulie Ayala at 122 pounds. Seems difficult because Ayala, of course, is promoted by Bob Arum, and Austin is promoted by Don King, and seldom the twain shall meet. He himself wants to unify the 118-pound championships, Emmanuel. If you ever tell a fighter, no, no, you can't do what you want to do. You have to do what is the good business. Uh, that's true in boxing, particularly with the organization and the rules. But I think that Timmy Austin's toughest challenge in his career is going to be his next fight. Rafael Marquez. Even, even though he may be looking towards moving up to fighting Durrell and looking at the fighting the other big guys up there, his fight with Rafael Marquez is going to be a life and death fight. It's going to be a give and take battle too with a lot of action. Well, Marquez punches with a lot more power than Vargas does and a lot more speed. And the fact that he has a good sparring partner is his brother, who's the number one featherweight contender also. Yeah, well, that'll be fun to watch. So we'll see uh, when and if that happens. Meanwhile, um, a bigger picture.